Land snails are gastropod mollusks that possess a unique anatomy, allowing them to climb walls, overcome barriers, and navigate uneven surfaces. Furthermore, one snail can climb onto another snail's shell, creating a type of adhesion bond. In nature, snails congregate and even attach to one another for various reasons, such as mating, moisture retention, and temperature regulation. We posit that the individual snail's obstacle crossing capabilities and the interconnecting behavior observed among multiple snails can provide valuable insights for the design of a novel terrestrial robot swarm. In this study, we develop a novel 3D freeform self-reconfigurable snail robot swarm for field applications, which draws inspiration from the unique anatomical structure of snails. Here shows the morphological evolution from a snail to a snail robot. The snail robot also features the ability to connect to another robot's ferromagnetic spherical shell using its connection mechanism, resembling snail's attachment in nature. This expandable capacity enables the formation of larger, more adaptable robotic systems capable of handling a broader array of tasks. Hence, crafting an effective connection mechanism for the snail robot becomes an essential aspect of the design process. Here, we tested the changes in the snail's foot under different magnitudes of pulling force. At first, when the pull-off force is very small, the snail mainly uses mucus adhesion to stick to the surface. As the pull-off force increases, a vacuum chamber begins to form in the middle of the snail's foot, and its area progressively enlarges. At this point, the snail used both mucus adhesion and suction force to counteract the external force. Finally, when the pull force exceeds the maximum that the snail can withstand, the connection breaks. From the slow-motion footage, we can see that the vacuum chamber in the snail's foot eventually develops a leakage point. Drawing from nature's blueprint, the snail robot employs a dual-mode connection mechanism akin to that of a real snail. Real snails use mucus adhesion to stick to substrates, enhancing their suction force when they encounter an external pulling force. Similarly, the snail robot uses magnetic adhesion to connect to other robots' spherical shells and to transition between robots. When a substantial force is exerted on the robot's shell, such as when other snail robots connect to it, the robot extends its vacuum sucker to generate a suction force, to ensure a secure attachment to another robot's spherical shell. Here is a bottom view of a real snail robot. We call the mode only which only uses magnetic tracks the free mode, and the mode that also uses the vacuum sucker strong mode. We can observe the state of the sucker in both modes through the transparent spherical shell. Typically, the tasks performed by a terrestrial robot swarm can be broadly categorized into six classes, assembly slash disassembly, self-reconfiguration, flow, manipulation, locomotion, and support. The first three types demand individual mobility and the ability for robots to freely move on their peers. The connection strength required for these tasks is generally not high, it suffices to support a single robot unit. However, the latter three types usually involve multiple robots linked together or forming a cantilevered structure, scenarios where a mere free connector often struggles to provide stability. To address these diverse needs, the system expertly balances mobility and secure connectivity by assigning specific functions to each mode. In free mode, the snail robot uses its differential tracks with embedded magnets to facilitate a free magnetic connection. The robot is capable of executing three primary actions in this mode, yaw, sliding, and transitioning between modules. The first three tasks, assembly slash disassembly, self-reconfiguration, and flow, can be performed in this mode. In strong mode, the snail robot utilizes its retractable vacuum suction cup to form a high-strength suction connection. This enhancement mechanism not only fortifies the module's vertical anti-torque ability but also increases yaw drive torque, supporting the latter three tasks, manipulation, locomotion, and support. This is the comparison of connection strength and driving capability in free mode and strong mode. Evidently, the strong mode, while compromising on forward movement, significantly enhances the robot's resistance to external forces and increases its output torque compared to free mode. We test the single snail robot unit in various complex outdoor environments. Unlike some robot swarms that can only move on flat surfaces, the snail robot is capable of traversing uneven terrains. Here, we shows that the robot can crawl across uneven stone surfaces. The robots can also pass through gutter railings. Furthermore, snail robots can operate on deformable terrains, such as lawns.
However, owing to size constraints, a solitary robot encounters significant obstacles when traversing certain terrain features such as elevated steps, wide gullies, or roads strewn with large fragments. Multiple snail robot swarms can traverse terrain that is inaccessible to an individual robot by utilizing collective flow motion or by forming a larger, integrated robot. Here, we present four main outdoor experiments about snail robot swarm applications. This experiment demonstrated the ability of snail robot groups to collaborate to overcome step-type obstacles in the wild. Six modules were scattered on the ground initially. Ahead was a stone step that was 1.5 times the height of the robot, and the robots had to climb it to reach the target point at the top. This experiment demonstrates the locomotion ability of a large three-legged robot made up of seven small robots to traverse a cobblestone road. The experiment demonstrated the ability of multiple snail robots to cross a trench-type obstacle. This experiment demonstrates the ability of multiple snail robots to form a robotic arm to move other peers in the wild. This indoor experiment shows the transformation of the snail robot swarm from a single arm to a dual arm manipulator. Finally, we demonstrate the procedure of the free snail robot on the work surface assisting the dual arm manipulator in gripping and relocating a block. We hope this research can propel the evolution of terrestrial robotic swarms, widening the horizons for their real-world applications, particularly in unstructured outdoor environments.